In this video, I'll be talking about the difference between hydrophobic hormone signaling versus hydrophilic hormone signaling. Now, if we divide hormones, hormones can be divided into either hydrophobic or hydrophilic. So, hydrophobic or hydrophilic. So what's the difference between hydrophobic and hydrophilic? Hydrophobic is water hating and hydrophilic is water loving. But I'm sure you know that by now. This is not a repetition. And what are some of the examples of hydrophobic hormones? They're going to be steroids. They're going to be T3, T4. Those are going to be hydrophobic hormones. When we're talking about hydrophilic hormones, we're mostly talking about hormones which are made up of proteins, which are made up of amines, and which are made up of catecholamines. Okay, so these are going to be our hydrophilic, uh, hydrophilic hormones. Now let's talk about uh, hydrophobic hormones first. So we know one thing that our cell wall, our plasma membrane, our cell wall is made up of lipid bilayer. Okay, and because it's made up of lipid bilayer, uh, it's made up of lipid. As a result, when another lipid comes in contact, the lipid can easily go through the cell wall. So our hydrophobic uh, hormones can easily pass through our lipid bilayer and there is no there is no guard at the door to stop this hormone to get inside the cell but whenever we're talking about hydrophilic uh, hormones there is a big checkpoint here that they have to go through and they have to enter through a certain channel because this is lipid uh, bilayer is lipid and hydrophilic hormones are not lipid. They're proteins, amines, or catecholamines. So they need a, a, another medium through which they're going to enter the cell. But I will talk about that in detail specifically. First, let's talk about uh, hydrophobic signaling. Okay, so let's imagine that this is our lipid bilayer and this is our, nu this is our nucleus. So our hydrophobic hormone is going to easily cross through the cell membrane inside the cell and imagine that this is our hydrophobic hormone so what this hormone is going to do this hormone has two options two pathways through which it can travel it can bind to a cytosolic receptor this is my best effort to draw um, <laughs> the hormone binding perfectly to the receptor. So it can bind these receptors in the cytosol or this hydrophobic uh, hormone can enter the nucleus through this nuclear pores. It can enter the nucleus and there also it can bind to the receptor. Okay, so it has two options. It can do both it can do either okay so let's take one at a time and talk about them when these hydrophobic hormones binds to this receptor they form something called hormone receptor complex okay makes sense right if the hormone binds to the receptor they're going to form hormone receptor complex now this hormone receptor complex can then enter the nucleus okay and it can go to the dna or either this can stimulate or inhibit the production of proteins or it can stimulate or inhibit a signal the same thing can happen this hydrophobic um, hormone can enter the nucleus binds to this nuclear receptor inside the nucleus and again form the hormone receptor complex and then this hormone receptor com complex then either activate or inactivate our DNA. Now when this complex binds to our DNA to make let's say a protein as a, as a result 
this specific area where they bind so let's say they bind to this area this specific area of the DNA is called HRE or hormone response element okay when this binds to this DNA it's called hormone response element now that is my take on the signaling on hydrophobic um, hydrophobic uh, hormone signaling now let's talk about hydrophilic hormone signaling now just like hydrophobic could easily enter the cell membrane um, in hydrophilic hormone signaling it's not going to happen so readily but it will enter the cell through receptors so let's say this is the receptor usually this receptor has um, uh, this receptor has a G protein attached to it and the G protein so imagine this is the G protein and this G protein is really uh, have three subdivisions alpha beta and gamma okay uh, this is going to be attached to this receptor now this hormone which is hydrophilic is going to bind to the receptor and once it binds to the receptor the alpha subunit is going to dissociate from the G protein receptor and this alpha, alpha subunit is also going to uh, cause GDP to convert to GTP so let's say this alpha is going to adenylate cyclase now the thing is um, this there are many different kinds of hydrophilic uh, hormones adenylate cyclase is just one of them so this alpha subunit is going to go to this adenylate cyclase and it, now it's going to have energy with it um, and this energy is in the form of GTP and now adenylate cyclase is going to activate protein kinase A and protein kinase A is going to turn on a response in the cell so this is my take on the hydro Hydrophilic uh, interaction of hormones or hydrophilic signaling inside the cell. I wanted to make this video because it's it, we should be very clear exactly which are the hydrophobic and the hydrophilic and exactly which pathways that they take. I know this can be a little bit confusing sometimes, so I just wanted to uh, make this video and make it very, very clear that the two pathways are very, very distinct and there is no overlap, there is no room for gray area. It's, you know, hydrophobic deals with the cytosolic receptor and the nucleus and hydrophilic has to enter through a receptor which is going to have a G protein and the G protein is then can convert or it can activate or inactivate many responses inside the cell.